Today we're making pork asobuco. Mm -hmm. Now I know it's traditionally done with veal shanks or beef shanks. Yeah. I'm doing it with pork shanks because it's cheaper. Look how beautiful this They're is. They're pretty and you've got them nice and trussed and tied mm. up. Yes, why tie them, keep it together while they're cooking. This is gonna cook for a long time. Okay. So just a little double layer of string and my, my favorite thing is tie it once and then knot it through again. That'll give you that pull without tearing the meat. I love that. Okay. And then immediately we want to salt pepper and start browning these. Sunny, you yeah. have an onion and two carrots. Just quarter up the onions and slice up the carrots. Okay. I kind of like the vegetables a little big so that the whole time the meat is cooking, by the time you're done, the vegetables still have some shape. So this is not like a mince and dice. I go heavy on the salt and pepper on both sides with this. These are two inch cut and you have the bone in the middle, the shank bone with the marrow. And actually also buco means bone with a hole in it, which I didn't even really know. Um, so the hole obviously where the marrow is, a little bit of oil. You just wanna wait until the oil gets a little bit hot. I have carrots, onion, we're gonna put some garlic cloves and of course some bay leaves. People write me about bay leaves all the time. Yeah, it's like, an what extended, does it do? You gotta put it in in the beginning. It's not like a quick at the end thing. I still don't think we answered the question. What yeah, no, neither do like? I, by the way. I don't way. know if anybody can really articulate it, but do it. Trust us. I brown these. Sometimes I take 30, 40 minutes. Yeah. Get them nice and brown. Now, we know you're not browning to lock oh, in or gorgeous. seal any, any juices, because browning doesn't do any of that. All it does is straight up make things unbelievably delicious, which is to my mind, the most important thing of all. In goes the carrots and the onions, expertly cut. Right in there in the end, kind of big, the vegetables. Some garlic cloves, oh. quite a few. It's not date night, and they can go in their hole. I get some white wine in there. Salud. I like the white wine, even though we're going with tomato and a meat stock, and then add uh, a can of whole peeled tomatoes. Just bring this to a nice simmer. So this is traditionally served with like a risotto or something, but you could just do a little pilaf, a rice pilaf. When you know you're at the last stages of taking this out, throw a little pilaf in your already hot oven. Then the stock to cover. Um, Whoa, look at that. Gorgeous yeah. container nice. you have. That looks, looks huge. Nice mm. stock. Now, if you're not quite covered, what do you do? You know what? I just put a little water. I think at a certain point, you know, you got about a quart of stock, you're good. This meat with the marrow and all the flavor, you can add a little bit of water. We're gonna put these in the oven at 375 for about two, two and a half hours. My asobuco is just about ready. I am sauteing a little bit of spinach, by the way, and okay. just salt, pepper, and olive oil really quickly. Just kind of wilt it, let it finish. Kind of cook it halfway and let it hang. Now, we know that an asobuco is maybe more traditionally served with a nice rich risotto or yeah. something like yeah. that. But I like the kind of lightness, the brightness of the, uh, Alex, of the spinach. Alex, bring it. Oh. Yeah, mm. aromatherapy. Oh. Mm -hmm. So this has been cooking in the oven at 375 degrees for about two and a half hours till it's tender, right? You just, you, you, you touch the meat, you look at it, the meat looks up at you and says, I'm ready for my close up. Is so this different one you voices. Take the string off, or you just leave it on wow. and then serve. Look at that. No, definitely not. And I will say that I served a piece of string to the president of France when I lived in Paris, and so I am honestly string, and I oh, have a tough that's time like in the kitchen. That's, that's, you're that's gonna like get the guillotine for a that dream one. Dream about yeah. it. It's an yeah, anxiety I, dream. I did. I did one worse. I think I, I I served one to. She was a New York Times food critic. Ruth Reichel. Ruth Reichel oh, at, no. at, at Patroon. I had, a rib, I had these thick ribeyes and I always tied them up because they were so heavy and thick. <laughs> she went, when I was so freaking out, I just, yep. I, you know, I cooked three steaks and cho chose the best one. Yep. Oh and I turned around and grabbed the wrong one. Oh no. So I cut the string and then I just, I, I, I grab it with the scissor. Smart. Then wrestling just it with the, take the it right knife off. or, yeah. See, you want to take them up with a spatula and tongs just to keep them intact because they, they are falling apart and those, Vegetables so beautifully cut. So just top it with this, and you see that perfect combination oh, of the sauce. stock. Yeah, that sauce is crazy. The it carrots, was like navy beans up in there, and just yeah. be done. I can't right. wait to eat those carrots. I love when the carrots have cooked in the mm. meat juices. So do I. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, gorgeous. Now, oh, traditionally, oh, oh, it does get just the tiniest, right. Right. the just tiniest, the tiniest. You don't even know. Did you ever put cheese on that? Kiss the orange. Um. 
Jeffrey's looking no, for no, the pecorino. No, no, I'm just absolutely cheese. straight up answer. Why not? I mean, honestly, like a pecorino, I, a couple I of rounds of pecorino. Cheese, I would put cheese on anything. No? So yeah, why not? And okay. then just the sorry. tiniest little. I'm sorry. Yeah, just acid. a little red wine vinegar. Mm -hmm. Dot it on. Let's not even mix it in. So there's like a little burst here and there, mm -hmm. and it really wakes up those tomatoes. I gotta have a bite of this, Alex. I'm, I'm getting there. I'm, I'm getting there. I'm sorry. I mean, my mouth. I'm, is I'm water. like obsessively <laughs> glazing. So a little bit of the spinach, maybe. Spinach is perfect. Thank you, love. Look at that. Spinach is excellent, do, people. A little bit of spinach. And this is like when you have the Diet Cola with the full-size <laughs> meal. It's, it's so like true. all the extra large fries. The, the super-size bubble me, bacon give cheeseburger me this Diet with the Cola. Awesome. Or like a, a, a Roman Diet Coke. Uh, hey, that's a good drink on a plane. You <laughs> know me. Look at this. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I Forks and knives. love meat. You don't even need a knife. Wow. Look at this. Yep. No, really, you don't. I, I want you all to take a look at this meat. This really pays off, and a lot just of this is just apart. in the oven. It looks like it. Oh, look you are that. just doing it. Yeah. Oh, God, I hope so. Mm. Look at this. We do. This is my favorite thing you've ever made. Wow. Whoa! Sign yes. your painting. Yes. You can't put that yes. out there. This it is, is so no, like a bell delicious. Ring or something when that happens. That meat is just falling apart. And the sauce. I mean, the, the tomatoes get so rich from having all that pork fat in there. Yeah. And the little hit of the red wine vinegar at the end. I'm going to get to that spinach someday. I will. <laughs> <laughs> what, Katie? But for now, I'm going to stick with this beautiful pork osobuco.